Democrats are now trying to muscle through the last part of a deal that they cut with Senator Joe Manchin in order to get through the Inflation Reduction Act, and that is per fossil fuel permitting reform, although energy permitting reform more generally. Uh, David Sirota, uh, founder of The Lever, joins us now to discuss his new reporting on this. So, David, there are two ways that uh, Congress can try to push through this, this side deal that they cut with Joe Manchin. One of them would be to have a standalone vote and to say, you know, do you, uh, do you uh, support or oppose permitting reform that, that we promised Joe Manchin? Uh, that would kind of be a Democratic way to do it. It would probably fail if that was the case. Uh, the other way is to attach it to a government spending bill that if it fails, the government shuts down. Seems like they are leaning toward uh, that, that latter move, what's called a CR. And so uh, you, you reported on how only two Democrats, as far as we know, and one of them isn't even a Democrat, Bernie Sanders in the Senate and Ro Khanna over in the House, have pledged that they will, vote, they will vote against a spending bill if it is attached to this permitting reform. So to back up, can you tell us what, what is this permitting reform uh, that Joe Manchin wants? Well, there's no text to the bill. Uh, one, to, one leaked draft of the text had uh, the American Petroleum Institute's watermark on it, but that was only a draft <laughs> of the bill. Uh, so there's no actual text of this bill. But the basic idea is to um, weaken longstanding environmental laws that give communities a say uh, and various agencies a say over whether pipelines uh, and other infrastructure can be built. Uh, and the idea is to weaken those laws to expedite the construction of uh, primarily fossil fuel pipelines, although some proponents say that it will also uh, uh, significantly benefit uh, new transmission lines for uh, cleaner energy. But the point is, is to speed along the development of pipelines. Uh, and attaching it to a continuing resolution, as you, as you outline, is what Chuck Schumer is saying he's going to do, which is effectively uh, a tactic that says uh, either the Congress passes this gift to the fossil fuel industry and the utilities, or the government shuts down and lots of regular people are harmed. It's a it's a classic kind of hostage taking tactic uh, that Chuck Schumer is employing for, by the way, it should be mentioned, some of his biggest donors and obviously some of Manchin's biggest donors. I mean, Chuck Schumer is the number two recipient of utility industry cash in the Congress. Uh, Joe Manchin is the number one recipient of oil and gas cash in the Congress. Uh, two of their biggest donors are the company whose pipeline, whose West Virginia pipeline, uh, would uh, presumably benefit from this deal that, sh again, uh, Schumer's gotten about $280,000 from that company uh, that is uh, leading the Mountain Valley Pipeline Project. Uh, Manchin's gotten a lot of money from them as well. So this is a way to put a donor gift into uh, what will be portrayed as a must-pass bill. So I'm thinking back to the, the days on the House side of the Freedom Caucus as we're talking about this, and a lot of people are probably in their memory have those theatrical government shutdowns that they, you know, they can associate with various characters who came out of that era in our politics. It, David, to that point, it does seem like this, putting this in a CR feels like a test of the left, and it feels like Chuck Schumer knows, or he, he believes, that he can kind of bulldoze the ideological left on the Senate side. Do you think there's an appetite uh, to really test Chuck Schumer on the left in Congress if, if this gets attached to the CR? Well, look, that's that, that's the big question, because there's this letter going around. Fifty nine House Democrats have, have signed on to this letter criticizing the pipeline deal, complaining about it. And by the way, and, and rightly so, in my view, on the on the empirical uh, parts of it when it comes to the climate crisis. Right. The climate crisis is happening. Uh, why are we expediting the construction of fossil fuel infrastructure that will make uh, the climate crisis worse? The problem is, or at least the open question is, Will these 59, and maybe it'll get more signatures, will these legislators actually vote down a continuing resolution, or will they just request that this, uh, that this uh, gift to the fossil fuel industry is not put in the CR? Right now, they're asking the leadership not to put it into this spending bill, but they're not taking the pledge to actually vote it down. In other words, they're not actually yet looking like they're willing to wield real power. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, the only power a rank and file congressperson has is to vote no on something like this, to withhold their vote as a block. And so far, they're, they don't seem willing to make that pledge at all. And so, so far, it seems that Chuck Schumer's calculation may be right. 
And their votes only matter uh, if Republicans all vote right. no as well. And, and I, could, I could see it both ways. On the one hand, Republicans would love permitting reform as a gift to, to big oil. Right. On the other hand, they'd love to see Democrats kind of shut down the government Head, heading into the midterm. Well, you like, can tie it to gas prices in a midterm, in a mer right. midterm election cycle politically. Right. 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 I, I, it's hard to know where the Republicans are going to come down. I completely agree that 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 as we report, withholding Democratic votes, let's say 50 Democratic votes in the House, makes it harder for the Democratic leadership to pass it. But I agree with you, not necessarily impossible, because you're right, there may be a cadre of Republicans who say, listen, we'll, we'll vote to keep the government open for another month. We can have another battle over spending uh, and the like, a larger battle later. In exchange for, we get to give our fossil fuel industry donors uh, a big gift that they want. So I agree with you. This is not necessarily um, change, it won't necessarily change the game, but it would at least be uh, the purported <laughs> climate defenders in the Congress be putting their foot down and saying and showing that they're willing to try to wield some power. And Emily, what's your guess? You know the Republican caucus conference better. Are, where were they? Are they going to help Democrats on this, or would they all be no's just on a party party line? I think party line no's. If they're all no's, then the squad can do it by themselves. Yes, yeah. they only need four or five. Right. right. Yeah, it, it really does harken back to the Freedom Caucus. It's just a totally different side and a totally different issue. And it, it, it tests um, people who, who say, are saying this is a, an imminent threat and an urgent threat. Well, if you believe that, act like it. I, I, look, I completely agree. And, I, and I, I go back to the money. Why is the party, why is the Democratic leadership doing this? And you cannot write the money out of the story. There is a ton of money going into the party. I mean, again, one of the companies, this is just one of the pipeline companies, has put $400,000 into the House Democratic Campaign Committee and the Senate Democratic Campaign Committee, $400,000 total. Uh, that's a significant amount of money, uh, and, and that's just a taste. That's one company. So there's a huge amount of money that wants these pipelines, uh, that wants this fossil fuel infrastructure expedited. And the the progressive wing of the Democratic Party, if, if it exists, <laughs> this is its chance to actually wield power. And so far, it has shown no appetite yet to wield that power. Right. And they, they probably would not cause a shutdown, I, because I, I would think, think so. that House, Dem House and Senate Democrats uh, would blink and would keep the government open before, like if they if they realized, but well, you know, yes. who kn who knows? This is who knows? It's a high stakes gamble, but I th I think that they would not want to shut down the government when they feel like they've got momentum coming into the midterms. Yep, I I completely agree, and I think look, I also think that uh, again, I don't know the Republican caucus that well, but my guess is they wouldn't mind a government shutdown right before the midterms right. to point to a government in disarray, a party in disarray. So I think, I, I tend to agree with you that if the if the progressive wing of the party actually held, withheld its vote in a block, uh, that the Democratic leadership would blink, would take the permitting measure out, and would pass another continuing resolution, at least to put off the, the fight for another day. This is a one to watch closely for sure. David Sirota, thank you so much for breaking it down for us. Thanks to both of you. You can check out that story over at The Lever, and we will be back with more Rising right after this.